been a minute since we've talked with Matt Zimmerman, Arkansas color commentator for men's basketball, former assistant coach. And he joins us here on Halftime Today. Z, I know we're, uh, we'll be talking about uh, something that's obviously much sadder than we'd usually like to talk about with the uh, early death of, uh, of Lindsey Howell, somebody who you knew pretty well during uh, his two years at Arkansas. Yeah. Good to be on with you, Phil, Matt. Uh, yeah, boy, I hate that. It was just a terrible thing yesterday. Bad news coming in. And, you know, Lindsey was a, was a really, really good player. I was talking to Scott Verity from, with the Razorback Foundation this morning. He was like, Coach, he was really good. And I said, boy, he, he sure was. I mean, of course, he's a – not only was – everyone knows he's a 1990, you know, Midwest Regional MVP, but he's also the Southwest Conference Tournament MVP the year before in 1989, and uh, he was so good in, in big games. He was good on road games, and he was great in postseason. Some of his best games were against Texas, North Carolina, Dayton, NCAA tournament games that were huge wins, and he just always seemed to rise up. And uh, what, what a great uh, Razorback he was. I saw him referred to as uh, the glue guy on that uh, 1990 final four team that is all that's like um that that's like how uh, a baseball player will just refer to somebody as that guy's a ball player when you hear of yeah. somebody that's a glue guy that's like an ultimate compliment to hear for a basketball player it really is and he was definitely not a role player but he, he was that glue guy i was talking to coach richardson yesterday and uh we were talking about Lindsay, and he and we were talking about how you know coach said you know we, we were we had a lot of talent you had Todd and Lee and Big O and those guys, but but he was the one that brought all that together. Lindsey's the one that tied all that together, and, and that's what glue guys do. And that was the that was his uh, ability to do so many things. Uh, he could he could score twenty twenty five points in a basketball game. He, he didn't do that all the time, but he was a guy very capable of scoring, and and he did a lot of different things. Uh, best rebounding guards in Razorback history are Sidney Moncrief, who's still our all-time leading rebounder, who's a guard, and Patrick Beverly and Lindsey Howe. Lindsey was kind of played a small forward kind of role, but he was only 6'4", so his height is the height of a guard. But uh, those are the three best rebounding guys, you know, at, that, at those sizes in school history. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at him here, and you say he's six foot four on uh, his hog stats page. Six foot four, he averaged six point two rebounds during his two years at Arkansas, and yeah. uh, as he's doing that along with uh, he's got guys on the team that are are much larger than him, you know, like Big O or Todd Day, and yet he uh, he he pretty much rebounded with both of them. Well, no doubt about it. Big O was a very good rebounder. You know, Todd got in there and rebounded. Let me tell you somebody else that would, that would rebound like crazy. What you know. Well, you know, Mario Credit was would get in there and battle as well. So he was having to fight his own teammates to get those caroms, and he was he was so quick, bouncy. He he would jump up, tip a ball, bounce, boom, go right back up and get it. And uh, you know, I was talking to Lee Mayberry about him uh, yesterday and today, and Lee was like, you know, Lindsey was a lot stronger than people thought Lindsey was. He had strong hands, and he was uh, and he was just such a quick leaper. And uh, boy, I tell you what, he he was he was huge. He was huge here for two years. That, that ninety that ninety uh, run to the Final Four does not happen for sure without Lindsey Howe. What what kind of a person was he? You know, we we've talked about what kind of a basketball player he was. I usually know that when you if someone's ever referred to as a glue guy, that's not just on the court. That's off the court. That's in the locker room. Sometimes it's in the classroom. What sort of a person was Lindsey Howell aside from being a good basketball player? Well, he was a he was one of those guys that he was he could, he would say stuff when times called for it to be said. If it was a we weren't playing well, or if he didn't think guys were giving what they should give, or if he would get he would say something. He was not afraid to say anything. But by and large, he was a pretty quiet. Uh, man he was he was not loud he was not very vocal um he was a guy that i would consider soft spoken he was you know todd was a pretty loud guy you know lee lee mayberry was quiet and then Lindsay, Lindsay was that same type that he was out of that same mode just kind of a quiet demeanor and took care of what he was supposed to do you know a, a unique story about him you know ron Hurry was the southwest conference uh newcomer of the year when he came in and then his sophomore year, I think he was second team all conference. So Ron's going into his junior year. Then Lindsay comes in, he comes from San Jacinto. He's a junior college in the Houston area and he's coming in. And 
I was giving him a ride somewhere, and it was during basketball camp, and they were playing during the dinner break, playing pickup basketball. And it's these great freshmen that are coming in, Todd Lee, two of the top ten high school players in the country, Big O, Daryl Hawkins, loaded team. And he's watching the pickup. He wasn't getting to play that day because we, we had to go run an errand with him. The coaches were sending us on. And we were. And I said, come on, we got to go, Lindsay. And we go out and we get in my head an old four-door Cutlass LS. And I, we get an old beat-up car. And my parents said, Kim, we got in that Cutlass. And he, we get in there, it's hot. And he said, I'm going to get to play a lot. And I said, yeah, you'll, you'll have to work. I mean, we got a pretty good team coming back. And he said, no, I'm going to get his minutes. I'm going to get a lot of his minutes. <laughs> and I said, who's minutes? And he said, Ron Hurries. And I, and I said, I know. You need to try to get somebody else's minutes. But I said, you need to go after these freshmen. I said, Coach Hurston loves Ron, and Ron's really, really good. And uh, he said, no, I, I think I'm better than Ron. And I'm not saying he was. Ron Hurries was an outstanding player, McDonald's All-American. But it was that kind of mindset and that kind of practice effort that he put forth. And you know what? I'm not saying he took Ron's minutes, but uh, during the final, the 1990 Final Four run, Ron was coming off the bench. Lindsey's starting basketball player. And uh, that was the mindset he had and the confidence that he had, get quietly. But he uh, he was very, very good player. Ron was a good player, too. But that, that was a very – there's people that think the 1990 Arkansas team and the 1991 Arkansas team were as good as teams as we've ever had. They just didn't win the national championship. One made made the final four. The other one made the final eight. Speaking of Matt Zimmerman here on halftime, and it's funny you bring that up because I believe it was a cup. It was last week we were talking off air on the after the morning rush. I believe what now. Which for correct me if I'm wrong. Which one of those years was the final four at Denver? Was that the 1990? That was the 1990. That's right. Because, that was Lindsey's senior year. That's right. Because I think I believe it was Ty Richardson brought it up. And I'm curious what you think since you brought it up. If that final four was played somewhere else where it wasn't necessarily in the high elevation of Denver, Colorado, do you think the outcome might have been different for that team? Well, you know, I don't know because, I mean, all four teams had to play in it, and so I, I, I can't say that. UNLV was really, really good. And they, you know, Duke beat us in the semis, and then UNLV beat Duke in the, in the national championship game. Um, I think Duke, I think UNLV was, was, the be, was the best team, but you could argue it. You could very much argue that, that uh, because the, the altitude, you know, we were a pressing, trapping, high energy, a full court running team, and that may have impacted us more than it would have Duke, who was didn't play super slow, but they played slower than we did, you know, and they weren't pressing, they weren't trapping, so they weren't making it as a full court of a game. So, you know, the altitude in, in that regard, it may have helped them a little bit. But, um, you know, it the things we did, you know, using depth, pressing people, playing an up-tempo game, maybe that got neutralized a little bit in Denver. But uh, that was still a, a really, really good basketball team. And, and I tell you what, uh, Lindsey Howe, to me, he is one of the most undervalued, underappreciated players in school history. Coach, let me get your thoughts on the team Arkansas from the basketball tournament. Now, I, would, I just need your help explaining this to me. Now, what what happened with Team Arkansas? Did they they didn't make the tournament? Or explain this to me because I was looking trying to find some information about them and couldn't really oh, find it. Oh, on the TBT. TBT, yes, sir. Yes, this was going to be my first year with it, and uh, Keith Kelly, who helps, who's kind of always put it together, Keith and Conway. He had the team in the tournament. Again, there's usually 64 teams. Uh-huh. And the first year they, they got in, they actually won a game, and they got beaten in a round of 32. Last year he had a team in it, mostly you know a lot of Razorback, former Razorbacks, and they got beat in the first round pretty soundly. And so um, we were going to be in the tournament this year. We already had a roster together, and we're going to play. And then with the COVID, that, that it wiped out the tournament from 64 teams, and the organizers – we're trying to do this little bubble. They couldn't do that with 64 teams. So they reduced it to 24, and they pretty much took teams that had had success or made the, like overseas elite had won it four times. You know, they were going to be in it. You know, the team that won it last year from Ohio State, they were going to be in it. So people that had had past success, you know, kind of had the uh, leg up. So it was kind of like a selection within the people that run it. So Arkansas had never been past the round of 32. There's only 24 teams in it. You know, we, we couldn't get in it. So gotcha. when they reduced the field, that that's what hurt. We'll, we'll have a team in there next year. It's fun. I love that TBT. So we'll be back in there. Hopefully we'll be back to a 64-team tournament. Keeping it on there just for a second, when you you talk about the bubble that they kind of created with the 24 teams there, and for the most part, at least from what I heard, there wasn't really any hiccups. You didn't really see any issues as far as 
the virus being spread down there. And it's the one thing we really haven't spoke a lot about because, and rightfully so, it's all about football right now. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, not necessarily. It's still months away from basketball coming around. But, I mean, you're going to blink your eye. We're going to be September, October, and heading into November when basketball season rolls around. But, to me, watching that tournament, kind of how it played out, I think gives me a little bit more confidence that a basketball season, particularly at Arkansas, could theoretically happen. Now, granted, it was a bubble, but yeah. I still feel confident that we'll see a basketball season. Yeah, I, I think so. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're playing around here. You know, we're obviously planning on basketball to happen. There's great excitement about the team and about, you know, it's going to be great crowds again. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. So hopefully we can just get to that and that we can get to clearance and have it. The TBT had that, that bubble. Uh, they did a good job. The only hiccup they had was the team Dusty Hannes was on. Um when there wasn't an Arkansas team, he was on another team, and his team was there. Dusty had five COVID tests, and he came back negative on all five of them. They had a teammate that was negative, and one time, like the fourth or fifth test with him, he came back positive. He was never sick. He was asymptomatic. And so that team got removed from the TBT. They were already there. They were there for like five days. And they never got to participate, and the team they were supposed to play uh, was allowed to, you know, was given the win and advanced in the tournament. So, you know, Dusty sat in the hotel room in Columbus, Ohio, and I think he had two or three practices with the team, and the rest of the time he was just in a hotel room and never got to play. And I hated that. And they, they were they had a national TV game like seven o'clock on a, on like the Tuesday during the week of that tournament. They never even got to play, so that was the only issue they had. But I think that tournament did a pretty good job of staying safe. College basketball, though, crowds are so important. Absolutely. They impact the game so much. They impact referees. They, everything about college basketball, the pageantry, the just the, you know, boy, I just hope we can have that. Just hope we can have that this year. No kidding. No kidding. Hey, before we go, yeah. Z, uh, I saw that uh, I think your favorite Razorback of all time is celebrating a birthday today. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Bailey Zimmerman is uh, – She's turning 23 already. Uh, oh already. I mean, when she came up here before her freshman year, she was 17 years old. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she, she's got her degree. Now she already has a master's degree. And she's still here in Fayetteville. She just turned 23 years old. I can't believe it. And uh, so, yeah, happy birthday to Bailey. Absolutely. Happy birthday. Well, yeah. say hi to her for me and a happy birthday, Definitely. too. I love covering her. Definitely. and she's, uh, she's wonderful. So I appreciate your time, Z. Thanks for talking with you. Appreciate it. All right, you y'all got have it. a good day. Bye. Matt Zimmerman. Got what want to hear that guy on the radio once November rolls around. That's and when I'll, you know that's when you know it's basketball. When you hear him and Chuck Bear going back and forth and that's it's and I, fantastic. I wanted, I want to do a couple of games with Z this year. I didn't get to do any men's games last season. I love doing games with Z. Because I just never know when I'm getting stepped on, nor do I care. <laughs> nor do I care either. It's it's way too much fun. All right, we got three up, three down after the break as our cherry on the top today. If you've got one or three or six in some cases, 877-377-6963 is the number. Cherry on the top after the break.